Hey, welcome back to Oak Tree National. I am out here having a what I call a practice round. We are simply just putting ourselves in situations that are very difficult, like this one here, where I have to hit it out of the rough. I can't stop it on the green. I gotta somehow bump it up the slope and give myself the best chance to make a, at least a par or a bogey. So that's what we do here when I play practice rounds. So welcome today. We're gonna take you on the course at Oak Tree National and hit shots like this. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. All right, so we're, we're back at Postage Stamp, which is a par three and Look, it's not very long. Remember from here, this is where I played it from last time, right up in here. And this is about, let's see what this is from here. It's 153 from here, but here's what I wanna do with you today. Some of the things I like to do on the course when I play is really challenge myself. I'm gonna walk back here. We're even going past the, the tournament tees here to the very hardest spot to play this hole from, which is the back of this tee. Now, I just probably walked back 15 yards. Let's take a look how far it is now to that flag. All right, so I just made this hole 171 yards. Now I want you to take a look at that green. It is tiny, and the pin is actually on the, on the front edge. It's about 190 to the back of the green, 175 from this plate to the center. So the pin's on the front. Now here's what I know. This is a little course knowledge here. I know that this green is very firm there is probably no way, especially with the wind, I can see the wind and see the flag is kind of downwind. There is no way to get this ball in between the water, that creek, and the, the, that wall that you're seeing, and the flag. And here's my point to this. Don't even try. If I, I have 171 to that flag, 176 to the middle, 180 to mid back of that, gives me a 20 or 30 footer, look, this is a 180 shot. I know that sounds crazy because it's 171 to the flag and you're like, okay, hit it to 171. I'm gonna play a 180 shot here. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you play a round of golf, sometimes you have to play for par. You have to play smart. That's the discipline of this game is, is not always saying every shot at the flag, I gotta shoot you know, two, three, four under par. No, you gotta hit good shots. And how many times do you play a round of golf and hit a good shot and ends up in a bad spot? And that's because the, the, you didn't play your highest percentage shot. You hit a good one, you're like, oh, I went in the water. You hit the wrong club. That's the wrong club. If you're hitting good shots in the water, you hit the wrong club. So I'm gonna line this shot up and I'm gonna hit this six iron. Now, this six iron, I feel the wind. I got a one club wind behind me, so I'm thinking maybe seven to get it back there, but let's think about this for a second. I just, as you saw in the last video, I hit an eight iron from 155. So a 177 yard shot would be a seven iron. This is gonna go a little bit long. Um, yeah, I can get a seven iron to 180 from here. Let me just get the seven. But the whole point here is I've gotta get that, this, this behind that flag. The goal is to get this, this ball behind that flag. One seventy five center downwind. Like I'm going through it in my head. So that's what you gotta make sure you feel. I'm gonna go from here to hit that shot. I gotta make sure it's the right feeling. How do I feel about it? All right, I got it. I got it. I like the seven iron. All right, let's do it. That's as good as I can hit it right there. And look at the line of that. That yeah, went a little long. So here's the thing about it. I, um, the line is right of the flag. That ball's long, but this is such a challenging hole and I hit that extremely good. That ball went about 190. So sometimes you actually hit shots that you hit so good, you're like, wow, hit that good. But that, I'm not upset with that. We're gonna go down and see a pretty dang easy chip from there. 
I would never hit an eight from here. Let's put it that way. This was a seven iron that I really caught really well. It caught on the green and went long. It's safe. I can make par. That's why this hole is so great. So the challenge here is just, it's just a hard shot because you got wind, you got a tiny green, you got elements, then you got this front hole location. So let's go look at this shot and we'll, we'll, we'll hit a shot from behind the green with a long chip, but I'll show you it's not that hard to make par from there. All right, so what I want to do for you here is you can see my ball, it's, it's long of the green. It's not an easy shot, but it's not terrible. But what I want to do is I'm going to measure this because I want to kind of see how far that seven iron went under these conditions. I'm going to walk up to where it landed. So this is 175 right here. It's 175 here. And, and by the way, this is your landing area in here. This is where you've got to get the ball right in here. Because if you go, you see the bunker there. So this is, this is the spot I was aiming at right here. This is, my, this is where I was trying to land the ball. Unfortunately, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I flew it 10 yards too far, nine yards too far. It hits here and goes down here. Now, this is a great miss. But that's the difficulty of this hole. If you see, there's just really no space here between that hazard and that hazard and the pin being on the front. There's just no place to really give yourself any forgiveness. That's why I like playing it from all the way back there because, I mean, 180 yards, I mean, that's a hard shot, right? So let's go ahead and look at this shot. Um, everything seems to slope off into these kind of low areas here. I need to grab a different wedge, but I need to grab my lob wedge. What I'm gonna do, let me go grab it real quick. So the shot is to, and look at this, I'm gonna walk back up here. The shot is to land it. Right in here. Let it run down to that hole. All right. A little rehearsal there. I want to get the feel for that. I'm going to bump it right up in there. Make sure the face isn't wet. That's what I'm doing here. I'll make sure the face isn't wet because I want that ball to have as much spin as I can get on it. That's why you see guys do that. They wipe the face off because if you go in here and you practice, the face gets wet. So wipe it off. Here we go. All right, it's not bad. I didn't hit high enough, but not bad. All right, so I'll make a little par putt here. I meant to land it more up in here, but I kind of hit it on that line there. All right, and one of the things too you can do is, is you know, walk around the hole a little bit. Don't take too much time, but just walk around the hole. And like, obviously it's going this way. So you're kind of feeling the reed with your feet. There's a huge ball mark right there. I got to get rid of that. Got a big ball mark right in front of my ball there. All right. All right, this is definitely going to the right. I like that right there. Got it. It's up the hill. I got to give this one a little bit of energy. All right. So pretty simple putt, really. Just hit it a hit up the hill. Um, just right at, just left edge, and move a little to the right. So look at that. Nice easy par. And like I said on this hole, and look, you got to strategize these holes. The point to this is I gave myself my best opportunity by lining up on this side of the green. It may have shoved it past the hole, but I had a pretty, I don't want to say it's a simple chip, but I had a, a high percentage chip to get to make par. So that's how you play right there. That was fun, postage stamp. That's a fun hole right there. It just, it just, I mean, you can see the green from here. It's just nothing there. It's just a big island. and. 
and you got to mess around and hit the right shot there. So that's always fun to get away from there, get away from there from par. Now this this hole, dog leg right par four bunkers to the right. This is the debatable hole here. Um, strategize strategizing whether I should hit driver here or three wood. Uh, and the tees are a little bit up. I'm still gonna hit driver because I want to practice with my driver. This will run it through the fairway a little bit. It's, and I know it's downwind. Remember that seven hour just went about 180. So this is gonna go through the fairway. But what I want to show you there, and I'll drive it down through the fairway, and I'll show you if you, on a down slope out of the rough. So I'll, I'll kind of show you this. So I'm gonna still try to hit a good drive on my line. Going to the right side of the tee. Lining my uh, golf ball up as I usually do. So look, one of the things, and this is the, the thing I want to talk to you about today, is come up with ways to give yourself your highest percentage chance of success and build routines around that and use that. That's why I have my robot. That, my robot has my highest percentage chance of hitting a good shot. When I line that golf ball up at my line, that's my highest percentage chance of getting my alignment. Um, the routine I have when I step from here into that shot is my highest percentage chance of hitting it good. So I'm always I just have a system of playing golf and I don't vary from that system and it also eliminates a lot of guesswork. I got my ball lined up just between the bunkers which will run it through the fairway so let's just pound it down there and I'll show you where it ends up. It's exactly on my line, check that out. Now watch. It's gonna hit the fairway. <laughs> I know this so well. That is exactly where I lined it up, right on my triple track line, right in between the bunkers. You'll watch that, that shot tracer on that one. It goes right between the bunkers, kicks down, it's through the fairway in the rough. But that's where I wanted to be because I want to show you the shot I have. All right, so, you know, just a strategy thing. I, I hit the wrong club off the tee on purpose, but normally you want to drive it back in here and leave yourself 130 to 140 yards. Maybe hit a three wood back here, leave yourself 150. I drove it up here through the fairway because I wanted to show you kind of a downhill lie in the rough kind of shot. But I'll tell you what's worse about this shot, hitting it here is knowing that the hole, see the hole location is now tucked a little bit behind that bunker. Okay, so there's a slope there. I can use the slope on the right side of the of flag, but this does not make it, this would be a really bad idea is to drive it this far up in the rough trying to hit that flag just so you know that that's just not good course management. But let's just talk about this shot. Let me measure it real fast. One sixteen. Okay, so that's a little gap wedge for me. So I'm gonna hit a gap wedge. I'm gonna play it right of the flag and try to, you can't see it probably that well on camera, but it's sitting in a little valley. And so if I fly this about 112, just right of the flag, it'll funnel down in there. So I'm gonna play it just to the right. now. One thing I want to talk to you about here is one of the things that a lot of you are asking me when I, when I get on the course and teach you a little bit is you're saying, well, I wonder if I should talk myself through my shots like you do. You know, normally when I play, I don't, you know, I don't talk this much and, and, and basically discuss every single shot, but think about something for a second. You do it in your head. I always tell people you're discussing this shot in your head. All I'm doing here is discussing my strategy on what I, I try to think about in the shot. And one of the things that I always do is, is keep my focus on what I want. It's, it's the positive type of thinking. So let me, I'm going to do on this one what I wouldn't want to think about. This is not the way I normally do it, but here's what you don't want to think. Okay, don't hit it in the bunker, right? You're saying don't hit the bunker, but you don't hit the bunker. See, now that type of thinking, you're, and the problem with that type of thinking is you're emotionalizing what it feels like to hit it in the bunker. I just added the feeling of hitting a shot in the bunker to the robot. And that's why it, you start getting nervous about shots. So I'd rather do it this way. I have 116 to the flag. It's about, I want to land at 112 just right of the flag, a gap wedge, a little downwind is going to go right into that 112 spot. So all I want to do is say, okay, aim it just right of, the, uh, right of the flag and hit my shot. So I'm going to set the robot in there, aim it just to the right. So get my shot just to the right. And then just fire the shot right where I want it. Always focusing on what I want here. <laughs> well, that's not what I wanted. 
sometimes you don't get what you want. <laughs> All right, so, so uh, that was a bad shot, but here's, here's the thing. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the rough, and this is what my mind's doing. It's just too much going on, right? So, and I probably didn't get lined up right. I didn't hit it terrible, but I chunked it out of that rough a little bit. Yeah, that's what happens when you play. Watch this shot though. This shot is hard when I get up there. Um, so the smart play would have been maybe aim a little more right in case I chunked it left, but hey, that's what you do. So one of the things that I can't do, like I literally can't do when I play, is allow, allow myself to put into my mind what I don't want to happen. I just can't do it. I find myself just so distracted. So it's time, it's shots like this. So I really, really want to keep my focus on what I want. And that, that might be the biggest challenge of playing the game of golf really is, is just always focusing on the positive side. Here's what I want to do. Here's what, I, and then you hit a shot like this where it's not where you want to go, but you know, you're not going to be perfect out here, but that's kind of stuff. So look, this is going to go in my notebook is to really stay focused on what's the shot you want to hit and then hit that shot. Um, let me turn these fans off real fast. All right, let's crawl down in here. This gives me a little opportunity to, um, a little opportunity to kind of walk you through a bunker shot. One of the things, one of the things I want you to recognize about what's going on in, on this hole is I hit my drive in the wrong spot on purpose so I could show you that shot. Now, that led to a difficult shot into the green which led to possibly having a difficult shot here. Do you, do you see how just bad strategy from there puts me here? Keep in mind that it's a one shot at a time game and, and the people who play the best just have good strategy. So, you know, that was not a real easy shot from the rough. I couldn't control the spin. I didn't hit a great shot. But, you know, that's just kind of the compounded effect of that drive. So keep that in mind that that this game is, is a strategy, strategy game, and if we can hit better shots to start with, we don't put ourselves in those types of situations. Now, let's talk about this bunker shot. Obviously, a very large slope here. It's not a hard shot. One of the things that you, you have to consider here, always the lie of the golf ball. Sand looks pretty damp today, it's heavy. Um, it's, it's because it's, it's in the morning sand, it's kind of like heavy, it hasn't dried out very much, so it's gonna be a little bit heavy, but that's a real easy lift to get over. I got my 58 degree wedge. Let me just take a look real quick of where I wanna land this. So I wanna land it right up in here and let it run down to that, that hole there. All right, so it shouldn't be too tough. When I hit these shots, I just open the blade a little bit. I, I dead hand them. See, I'm not trying to chop down on this because it lies pretty good. So I'm gonna dead hand this and just kinda of feel the blade move under the golf ball there and just see if I can't pop it out. Can't see it. So a little long, but that, that's kind of the thing there is, I, I think people sometimes try to hit these too hard and they try to just use too much energy to get it out. And the loft of the club will do it and the weight of the club will do it. You just have to basically splash it out under the sand like that. So I don't use a lot of energy. I use the weight of the club most of the time, brings it out soft and lets it run, run itself out a little bit. One of the things too I recommend is that you putt these out. One of the discussions I have here with um, a lot of the players that play at the club, these are some of the hardest shots in golf to me, is the, you know, this is maybe a five footer, but a three to five footer. People just go, oh, good enough, and they pick it up. Or your buddy wants to be a good friend and he knocks it back to you. Don't let them do that. Because when you go play real golf, keep a handicap, play in a tournament, these shots, to me, that's more stressful than that bunker shot. This is more stressful than, than that wedge shot. This is much more stressful than a drive to me. So you, these are the ones that you really learn the most from. So practice these and putt these out because these are hard. These, they, you know, there's nothing easy about short putts on a golf course. And you're gonna miss and make some of these but it's a really good learning experience. So don't be one of those guys that's picking these up all the time because I think you need to really get good at this. This ball rolled past the hole. It's a little slider to the left. It's fast too, so this is a speed putt. Oh, this, is, this is a good one, this is a good one. Now look, I just I lined that ball up way too far to the right here. It's not gonna go that much. 
Um, cause as I got below the hole, I see it's all kind of going that way. So let me realign this. It goes, goes left. Then it goes whoop, to the right there. I'm going to play it relatively straight and notice I've realigned this ball a couple of times. I, I really want to get this one right here. Okay. That looks pretty good right there. It's almost dead straight. All right. It's at a good putt here. Just a speed putt. Straight in the middle. So, I mean, it's so important that you putt these out. That's a hard putt. It's fast, it's downhill. It wants to move different ways. Hit a nice line in the middle. Once again, it's a good example of just making a good par after, you know, hitting it in a drive, which was in a kind of a tough spot. Then I hit it in a tough spot in the bunker. Then I make a good, you know, was that four feet maybe for par. Important, put those things out. That's how you get better. Another really good hole, hole number 15. Um, we've, done, we've talked about this hole before when I did my playing around out here. <laughs> this tee box, there's a tree right there. It goes right at that tree. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tee it up on the right side of the tee. I've gotta get the ball down the left side. using the triple track on the ball. If you don't have a triple track, you put a, put a line on there, but get, get yourself to have some kind of advantage for alignment on the ball. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna refresh your memory here a little bit. We've talked about the robot, right? My robot that I hit golf shots with. We've talked about good course management. We've talked about how to think about the positive. So all those things that we've talked about that help you play give you the best chance to play great golf. That's what I'm trying to do is teach you how to get your best chance of playing great golf. I'm going to play this hole and just kind of walk you through the shots I hit to give myself my best chance, starting with lining the golf ball up correctly. And now watch this. I'm just going to walk in there, line the robot up, feel good, and nail it down the left side. I hit it perfect. Once again, it's just, you've got to keep the ball left half, let it kick down to the right. That ball is going to be very close to exactly where I hit it when I played in the round with you when I played the course. I, that might be on the exact same slope. That's how consistent I can play these holes. Let's go down there and look and see if that's slightly on the upslope. And I could have about 175 or so to the flag. Okay, right in a perfect spot, but it's slightly uphill and slightly below my feet. So let me feel that out for a second. So the ball is a little on the upslope, maybe a little below my feet. This is exactly where I hit the ball on the same slope. I think I was a little more there. This is exactly the slope I hit it on when I played this golf course with you when I did the playing round. Um, so this ball, the wind's coming from there. You can see the top of that tree. There's wind coming from the top. It's going that way. The flag is middle of the green, but slightly back. And this slope is favoring the ball moving left to right. As you know, I don't, I'm not a big shaper of the golf ball. However, I let the course tell me what the shape is. If I make a perfectly, if I aim directly at that flag and I hit a perfectly straight shot because of the, the angle of the slope and the, the way the face is going to react to that slope, that ball will end up in the right side. It'll miss the green to the right. So I've got to aim this left. So let me see how far I got. 181 to the flag, so that's that's quite a, quite a good shot here. Um, so I got 181 to the flag. The ball is the ball is slightly up. When the ball is slightly up, it's going to affect the trajectory. It's going to go up, which is going to make the ball go not as far, a little shorter. So 181, you know, that's a six iron to me, but I'm going to hit a five iron because I know it's going to go up and fade, which is going to kind of hurt the distance a little bit. So I'm going to hit a five iron high fade. Let me see how that feels. Okay. So a high fade, high fade five iron. See if I can't knock it all the way back to that flag, but I'm going to aim it a little bit left. So I'm going to go left side. There's a fan there just to the left of the green. I think it'll move that much. So I got the fan just to the left. 
Actually, I'm going just to the right of that fan. So just to the, you see the fan on the left. I'm gonna go just right of that fan and see if the wind will move it in there a little bit. Give this ball a chance to get all the way back there. There it is, okay, that feels pretty good. Come on, wind, come on, wind. Look at that wind kick it over there, wow. Wow, it was actually perfect length. It was actually a perfect length shot. I, I kind of yanked it off the slope a little bit. Um, it's pin high, but the way the green sets up, it's not a hard chip from there, but the way the green sets up, it just the wind didn't kick it over enough. But man, the wind hit it pretty hard at the top there. That was pretty good. That, that was crazy because the um, when I first hit it, the ball has lots of speed, so it, the wind's not hitting it. It's coming through these trees, and then right when it got in that opening, it was whoop, and it kicked it over to the right, but I just didn't, didn't kick it over enough. So it just, uh, didn't get onto the green, but man, it was a good shot. It was, it was hit hard. All right, this is a very difficult golf shot from where I've hit it. It ran, it ran through past the green down the slope. It's into, I wish it wasn't sitting in this rough because it'd be much easier if it wasn't sitting in the rough, but it's sitting in, in some pretty good Bermuda rough. It's got a down slope here. It goes way up the slope and I got very little green to work with. I gotta tell you something. My brother, Tim Graves, if, if you know Tim from Graves Golf, his short game, he'd be he'd be 90% chance up and down from here. He's, a, he's that good in short game. Him and I have been working on this shot. So most people would grab a lob wedge and try to lob it, and it's just the wrong shot. The shot here is really to take something like a nine iron or or even, I might even do that. Let me see what I got here. It's to bump the ball down and roll up the slope and try to get it on the green. That's the shot here. It's just the highest percentage chance. You just gotta make sure you have enough speed. These are hard because it's, you gotta get enough energy of the ball up the slope. Um, I'm, this is even, you could even take a hybrid, a five iron, a six iron, but I'm gonna do it with an iron, see, see how it works out here. But I gotta make sure that I don't hit it into the slope. You gotta run it up the slope. So we need to play the ball back and just bump it down and see if I can't get it up the slope. Now, I hit that a little firm, but here's the thing about it. And that, that's, you know, what is that, 15 feet past the hole. The important thing a lot of times on these shots is to get it onto the green and give yourself a putt. You don't want to like chunk it short and have it go down there. So just me hitting a little firm, getting it past the hole, gave me a, a par putt. That's why, you know, that's why Sometimes you hit yourself in situations that are hard, but on this shot here, because of the conditions and rolling up here, I just wanted to make sure I got it onto the green and gave myself a chance to make a par. But it's a, it's a hard shot because it's just coming off the slope here pretty fast, very hard to get it close. You gotta practice those. And that's why I came to the course with you today because I wanted to show you some of this stuff and how you can practice this. And what I'll do after I hit this, I'm gonna try to make this putt. I'll run back and we'll hit two or three shots from here and see what the best option was right there so we can learn something from it. Okay. Now one of the things I watched, I watched that ball roll itself out. And the reason I did that is because I can actually learn, see I hit it past the hole and I, I learned the line of the putt. A lot of times people hit a shot like that and they, they just get they get discouraged. Oh, I went past the hole. Look, when I hit that shot and I watch it, I watch it roll up, go a little bit that way, and then it went that way. I learned the roll of the ball by watching it. So pay attention because it's so easy to go, oh I hit a bad shot. I watched it. I learned something from it. So I saw I saw which way this went. And let's see if I can just follow that line back into the hole here. All right, pretty good right there. Okay, let's see if I can knock this in. Right down my line. I just pushed that putt a little bit, but that's all right. Look, sometimes you make bogeys. And let's go back, and what I wanna do with you on this is let's re-hit this shot 
and let's see, I'm gonna grab a couple golf balls out of the cart. And let's just see if there's a better option. You know, some guys will putt these. I don't necessarily putt them. The reason I didn't putt that is because it was in the rough. But I want to grab a little different club here for a second. I got a seven iron here. Let's see, let's re-hit this shot with a seven iron. And it goes about right. Right here. Okay. I'm gonna hit the shot with a seven iron. And the key is, is just getting the speed right up the slope. Um, but I wanna make sure this ball bumps down enough to roll up the slope. Same spot as I hit it last time. It's pretty tough. Do it one more time. What's making this, this shot particularly hard is that it's, it's in the rough. So you're, you're having to get something that knocks it out of the rough. If I had something, not make it too bad, but because it's sitting in this rough like this, I can't, I would probably putt it from here, but I can't get a putter through that. So it's making me kind of hit a little downward on the golf ball. And that's what's making this one a little bit, a little tough. And see, that's a better shot, but that's because I slowed the ball down. But like I said before, one time, when I come to the course and I have difficult shots like this, you can really learn a lot. Take some time when you hit a shot that you don't quite like to come back and hit a few extra ones to learn it. So on that shot, I had to basically play the ball back with a seven iron. So I, I'm basically de-lofting it enough. So when I hit the shot, it, it comes out low and rolls itself up the slope and it's just about feeling it up the slope and left myself about a five footer there for par. So look, a couple things about when you take, the take it out to the course to actually practice a little bit and learn something. This is kind of one of those rounds where I'm, I'm not really keeping score, but I'm, I'm putting stuff in my notebook. I'm seeing where I'm strong and where I'm weak. Sometimes you have to practice like that. So, so what we've done here is I went and played poach to stamp and I played it from as far back as you can play it because it's really a strategy hole there. Missed the green, but had a really good up and down there. So I learned a little bit about how to strategize a hole from playing it from very difficult situations. I also played uh, over here on number 14 where I meant to drive it through the fairway, which I did, and I had a downhill lie. I hit it back into the bunker and then got up and down from the bunker. So once again, just knowing that how to strategize the hole and give yourself a better chance. So we learned a little bit about that and how to hit a bunker shot. And then back there on 15, I hit a really good drive, hit it left of the green, had a really, really hard shot, chip shot, but I played a high percentage shot and made a bogey. But it was, it's not a terrible bogey because I played a high percentage shot into the green. We learned a little bit about how to strategize that as well. And we learned a little bit about side hill eyes. That's what I do when I play golf out here. This is a practice round. I'm showing you how to practice. Thanks for joining me. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a few comments if you like the channel. And look, if people are liking my content, please share it with others so they can enjoy it too.